Hey guys, um, finally getting around to putting this 5R110 transmission back together in this 2008 Ford F250. Um, here's our rebuild kit. I got this rebuild kit from Oregon Performance Transmission. They've got a website there. Um, I'm, I'm in Klamath Falls, Oregon, and they're in Salem, so a lot of the reason I use them that they usually have it in stock, and then it's here the next day. Uh, the small town that I live in, Klamath Falls, it's, they don't have anything like this, you know, transmission rebuild kits or anything. We call it Catalog Falls because you got to order everything. So I just get them off the internet from my transmissions that I do and uh, get them sent in to me. But So here's all our frictions right here. And then this kit came with all molded new pistons. There's our little reverse piston. And all the other clutch pack pistons are all molded pistons and um, steel plates for the kit. I mean this transmission was not in bad shape. The only thing that was wrong with it is he broke the uh, output planetary and I couldn't find that output planetary on uh, Oregon transmission, uh, performance transmission. I had to get one off of eBay. I found one on eBay. Here's the new one. Well it's not a new one. It's a reconditioned unit. They, obviously they reconditioned the planetaries in it, but you can see here, here's the old one. Well, oh, there's part of it. <laughs> there's part of it laying on the ground that responds into the output shaft. But as you can see, see the cracks in here? Where it cracked between the shafts where the pinions, the planet pinions go. It's cracked here, it's cracked all the way over here, that's cracked and broke. As you can see the, the output ring gear, it's all cracked and broke and you can see what happened here, right where that is, you know, part of that assembly where that output goes into the spline into that output ring gear it snapped it right out of there so that's about the only thing I might save out of this is these thrush washers for a rainy day some guys probably say oh you why do you save stuff like that well when you're 50 miles from the nearest parts store and you got to make something happen sometimes you save stuff like that I'm not in town to where everything's readily available to me so um, anyway, so what we're going to do is, uh, got the transmission completely disassembled, we're going to soak our frictions, uh, in some, uh, clean transmission fluid. Uh, I used a Mercon LV on these 5R110s. Alright, we'll get so here's our coast clutch assembly. I'm going to start out with the rebuild and, uh, disassembly of the sub-assemblies and the assembly of the sub-assemblies. So we'll start off with the coast clutch cylinder. Um, so that sun gear will spine into that planetary set right there, just like that. The thrust bearing there. So you've got your planetary set. You want to check these. Make sure they're, especially when this one's been abused like this, make sure you don't have any cracks in the housing or uh, Make sure, I've, I've already checked this planetary out, but make sure there's no teeth missing off the pinion gears. Make sure there isn't way too much in play on the, plan, on the pinions. So we'll set this aside right here for right now. And the next thing we'll do is we'll, if I can find my screwdriver. This has a mechanical diode in it, a one-way clutch. What I do is just flip it upside down and everything will come out, usually. Now that I've got the camera, though, it's not going to work that way. There we go. Give her a little thump. Okay. These mechanical diodes on these are pretty easy because you really can't you really can't screw it up putting them back in because it says right here 
this side up so that'll be on top and then you're gonna have uh, friction and I expect these frictions and steels to look pretty good these fire 110s are really good transmissions I mean I don't I usually most of the I'm not an expert transmission rebuilder I I do a few now and then uh, but I can tell you one thing that uh, the 5 r 110s they shift really nice I've got a couple of them and a couple of my pickups uh, both those six Fords and they shift nice way better than the 4R100s ever did the 4R100s you always needed to shift cut them because they shifted like crap so all those frictions and steels look good in that so now we'll get a, a ring compressor we'll pop this snap ring off of here we'll compress this uh, clutch return spring piston return spring I mean and we'll pop our snap ring off and we'll pop this piston out of here and we'll change that piston out with one of our new okay, ones guys, so this is a pretty inexpensive tool this is what they call a snap press and it's just got a, various adjustments on this thing here to to compress these clutch return springs these piston return springs and to get the snap rings off this one's pretty tight so I had to push down on it pretty hard to get it it's got a lock here and these little tabs will lock here so once you get to pressing on it you can actually just press down on the handle and it'll lock into one of these notches I think I paid 170 bucks for that thing years ago and we'll pull our snap ring off if I can do it one hand which I probably can't do let me get another hand on this thing screwdriver at give it a little help with the screwdriver hmm. I got another pair of snap ring pliers that go wider than that let me go get them okay guys so we got the uh Turn the spring and snap ring out of there. So now, here's your clutch piston. What I do is I find my port here to where my oil goes in. And I just take a little air and shove it in that port and knock my piston out of there. So you can look at your piston seals and see if you had any problems there. Which I don't think this is going to have any problems. These molded pistons, you rarely have problems with them. They're pretty, pretty foolproof. Okay, so now we clean this drum up and lube our uh, piston up, our new piston, put her back in there. Okay, guys. So this this particular clutch pack. And what I like to do on these is I like to take a set of calipers and measure my old steels versus my new steels, and my frictions too they're not worn real bad just to make sure that my clutch clearances are going to be where they're supposed to be because I've had some of these steels and some of these frictions come in different thicknesses and then had problems so just a good idea to check that so this pack we got our we got our clutch piston in our clutch piston return spring and our snap ring in make sure your snap ring seated up in the groove really good and this one will have a steel plate friction basically every other one to you get to where you put your your one-way diode clutch has got one side of it acts as a a, a, a surface for the uh, last friction to go against here's our one-way diode remember it says that side up so put that side up Snap ring in. Okay. So 
So now, okay guys, so we got our close clutch cylinder assembly that together. I wanted to give you guys the the uh, dimensions for your clutch clearance. Take a feeler gauge, see the snapping here, and go between the pressure plate, which would be the one-way clutch diode, and the bottom of the snap ring, and push down on it with your thumb. You check it with this out, I already checked it. But the dimensions are 32 to 67 thousandths for the clutch, coast clutch cylinder assembly. And on on uh, on these, make sure you're getting your thrust washers back on and make sure they're orientated right. As you can see, this one goes against this flat surface of the this ring gear here. Well, if you turn it around and put it the other way, it's not going to sit on there right. It's pretty pretty obvious which way they go. So we'll shove this one out of the way. And our next cylinder is going to be our center support. So we're going to get the center support ready to go. Uh, what you want to do is change these seal rings. There's two seal rings here, one there and one there. And then you'll have to pop. Uh, what I like to do is we'll take this, take this thrust washer off. They call this number six thrust washer. Take it off of there. That way, when you're putting your piston uh, ring compressor on there you don't damage that thrust washer and then you'll compress this spring here and pop your snap ring off right here and then your intermediate piston will come out and then we'll change that we have a new intermediate piston right here that should be it right now I don't know if that one I think it's this one here yeah it's this one here so that's our intermediate piston and there's nothing really else to do on this Hey guys, so we got our intermediate piston out. There's what it looks like. It's not damaged at all. I don't think we're going to find really many problems. These transmissions are pretty bulletproof, really. Uh, they had to have something to save them from the 6 liter when they came out with these. Um, but now we've got all that off. Let's take this in the solvent tank and clean this up real good, our center support. Clean it up really good, and then we'll... Uh, Basically put our new piston in and our piston return spring snap ring and our sealing washers and the center support pretty much will be done. We got our center support all cleaned up. So I've got some what they call Dr. Tranny trans gel. And I just smear some on my on the edges here of my inner seal and outer seal. I'm gonna just do that right quick and I'll show you how these pop in here. I wanna show you how these pop in. These molded pistons are usually pretty easy to pop in here. But you need to lube them up. You don't want to get too carried away with the lube, but just get them where they're kind of slimed up there and slicked, where they'll kind of pop in. This this trans gel dissolves in the transmission fluid, so you're not going to hurt anything or plug any valves up with it. I mean, I've in the past. I'm not going to lie to you. I've been in a pinch, like I've told you before, and I'm out in the middle of nowhere and ran out of this stuff and forgot to get some and I used number two grease. I just was real sparingly with it because I didn't want to use too much and, and plug up a valve because I don't think it dissolves. I think it ends up in the bottom of the pan. So I don't recommend that. Just usually they pop right in. It's going to make a liar out of me. We got the right piston here. What do we got going on here? I don't think I got the right piston. No, that's the wrong piston. That's why it's not fitting, you dumbass. Ah, it probably helps a lot when you grab the right piston. Lost focus there. Okay, now that we've got the right piston in our hand, we've got our head popped out of our butt.
I mean, you shouldn't really have to force them. I mean, they usually go in pretty, pretty easy. They, you know, they're not too bad to do, really. Okay, so now we can put our spring back on there. Top. And I'll get my snap press and we'll shove that back down and put that on and we'll put two new we got two we got some all new ceiling rings here. Put those on. Okay guys, you'll see a couple holes here in the center support right one here on another one 180 degrees. You'll have two tabs on this. It'll fit down in them holes. Okay, and then we've got new ceiling, new ceiling washers. We'll put some trans gel on those too. I'll need two hands for that. And the ring gaps, just like a piston ring, I always do them. I do a hundred. I make sure my ring gaps on these rings aren't lined up. Try to space them 180 degrees from each other if you got two of them, and if you got three of them, uh, do them like 90 degrees apart. Okay, so there's our new ceiling rings. We got a gap there, so we'll turn this one 180 degrees. Put some trans gel on these so they, whenever they slide in there, they just kind of slide in there and didn't hang up, hopefully. There's a lot of risk on these automatics, man. It doesn't take much to cut one of these seals or a piston seal, and man, you gotta pull the whole thing back out of there again. Okay, so center port's pretty much done there. Okay, so now we're on the uh, Four clutch. Okay, so on the other side here, you can have two ceiling rings right there on the on the shaft. We got those off, and then pop your you know, pop your snap ring off, and pull all your frictions and steels out. You're gonna have a pressure plate, a friction, a steel. A a friction of steel, a friction of steel. Let me count them. The bottom one's a wave spring. As you can see that. That'll go on the drum first. And then there's... Let me count them here. There's one, two, three, four. Four frictions and... Three steels. No, I'm lying to you. There's four steels and four frictions. And then you got your wave spring on the bottom. So now we got to do the same thing. Compress this. And pop this. This one's got a level spring in the bottom of it, and it's pretty tight. So we'll pop this uh, snap ring off and change this clutch piston on this uh, forward clutch drum. So the first thing you're going to do is when you get that snap ring off, you're going to. It takes quite a bit of pressure to do that. Uh, they're pretty tight. They're pretty stiff. But the first thing you're going to have what they call a balance piston for forward clutch. There's two pistons in here. There's a forward clutch piston and the forward clutch balance piston. And you'll see that the outside diameter of the forward clutch piston seals inside the actual forward clutch piston. So you'll pop that out. And then you'll have a level spring in there. And look at which way it's facing. It's facing with the concave side. Let's see with this. With this. A tall part up in the center and then this outside part concave side down goes against the forward clutch piston and there's our forward clutch piston and there's nothing wrong with it either but we've got new ones so there's no sense in doing one of these transmissions unless there's just too much work you can't take a chance of of not just changing those and having to go back into it again for free, you know. 
Okay, so there's a new Ford clutch piston. We want to lube it up real good. There's another guy on uh, uh, that does, uh, I'm trying to remember what the, I know his name is Hiram Gutierrez. He's really good transmission builder. He just, he just goes a little fast for me and I can't keep up with him when he's doing them and sometimes I have to pause it and go back and watch it again and so I'm, a, I try and do things a little bit slower here so maybe if you're a, not as quick as some people are, I'm not as quick so you can keep up with it. So here's our Ford clutch piston. And it just pops right in there. Okay, so we should have a balance piston. There's our balance piston. We're going to put our level spring in next. Remember, it's going to go in like that. Let me show you guys that. That's how it's going to go in. I mean, it's pretty easy. You can you can see the marks where it rode before. I had one of these years ago that I had to rebuild. It was an 06 Ford, and this was broke. That's that return spring was cracked and broke. I'm sure I'm glad I'm not doing this YouTube thing like a lot of these guys are for a living. I just do this because that's nice to help people out and if somebody gets in a bind they can figure something else. You know, figure this stuff out on their own with my help, you know, with a little bit of help, you know. Um, because I'll tell you what, I don't know, I've, I've, I've gained quite a few subscribers. I'm not a huge channel or nothing, but I'm not going to brag and there's nothing to really brag about. But I'll tell you what, it don't pay. Okay, so we got that one. Now we got to compress this again and put the snap ring on. Remember, it's pretty tight. So first thing you want to do after you get your uh, clutch, forward clutch piston, forward clutch balance piston, your snap ring on, uh, and the level spring is between the forward clutch balance piston and the forward clutch piston. Is your, your little wave spring go against the balance piston, and then uh, I'm pretty sure it's a steel friction steel. Then look here, yeah. Then you want to stack up a, a new steel plate against the wave spring. And then a friction steel friction, and you know every other one until you get to your pressure plate. Something's not right. What's that going on here? Four clutch. Uh, I figured out what was happening there. They gave me one extra steel plate, and I didn't count it in the kit. There's four steel plates, and there's one wave spring. So one wave spring, then a steel, a friction, and every other one till you get to the pressure plate. You should have a friction on top that goes against the smooth side of this pressure plate. Well, this pressure plate's not directional. But I'm going to put it in the way it came because you can see where the snap ring was hitting the outside edges of that. And your clutch 
your gap is 45 to 65 thousandths on forward clutch. That's the snap ring gap between your uh, snap ring and your and your pressure plate here. So then put your snap ring in, and then we'll do another clutch assembly. So first and most obvious thing, kind of repetitive here, is pop the snap ring out. Pull your clutch plates out and get your pistons out. Same old song and dance. Alright, so let's look at this direct clutch. I'm seeing some evidence of some slippage here. This probably happened when the output broke. Yeah. You always want to put new steel plates in your kits because when they get heat check like this, they'll get warped and you don't want to put those. You'll have clutch drag or something and you want your clearances won't be right. It's just, just change them. Yeah, I mean, I can see that that one's a little bit concave there. It's warped a little bit on that friction. But it didn't slip them bad enough. These are high energy friction, so... Okay, so we got our pressure plate, one friction, one steel, two frictions, two steels, three frictions, three steels, four frictions, four steels on this pack. Okay, so now we do the old same old song and dance and compress this and get this piston out of here. So I'll be back in a second. And there's a couple bushings in here too. Look at your bushings on these just to make sure. I've, I've never seen the 4, uh, 4L80E automatics used to eat bushings like crazy. So you had to really watch those, but these look fine. Leave it alone. Just kind of set up like Ford clutches. You're gonna have a balance piston on top, your level spring in between them, and then your direct clutch piston on the bottom. So. Same old thing, I'll lube them up, we'll put our pistons in, the level spring in, then our balance piston in, put the piston snap ring on, and then put our plates together. And then that'll be direct clutch. And then we're done with the clutch packs pretty much, so. Uh, I think we still got overdrive is gonna be on the, here's our overdrive piston, I think that one's on the uh, pump assembly, so we gotta disassemble the pump too. We're gonna start out with steel plate. This is direct clutch. One steel, one friction. Till we get to our pressure plate. Okay, there we go. Install your pressure plate. And it's non-directional. This one, the pressure plate got a couple burnt marks on it. I'm going to turn it the other way. Let it wear on the other side. I'm going to put our snap ring in here. Alright, now we're going to put our forward clutch assembly here and put it into our direct clutch assembly. We gotta get all that stuff splined up. So I'll try to take a pick or something and try to get and get my frictions kind of centered in here. See if it this is the part you gotta have patience with is wiggling, shaking it and all that stuff, trying to get them to line up. Well let's try it. We got our thrust washer here. There's two thrust washers in here. If you can see that one there. This this one here, the blue side is up. The center one, the metal thrust washer. Not sure if we're all the way down or not. Feels like we are. I don't want to make sure. Yeah, we're all 
all the way down. Now I gotta do it all over again. Because I'm a worry wart. Alright. She's there. clutch assembly and direct clutch assembly. Actually I got that backwards. Four clutch, direct clutch. Now you're gonna put your four clutch ring gear and hub on there. You've got a thrust washer here. Plastic thrust washer. Well that never happens. It never goes in that easy. Okay, so I need to take some trans gel. We got a thrust washer that goes on the end of our Ford clutch planetary, Ford planetary. It looks like the blue side was down. Yeah, the blue side was down on it. We'll make sure it stays on there and it doesn't move around on us. Put some gel on her and make her stay put. <coughs> you got a big thrust washer that's fixed to the side of this planetary. So just stick it in here now. Alright. Let's see here. Um, we're probably going to put our sun shell on, I'm sure. Yeah, and then you put your sun shell on. And it has a big sun gear in the center of it. Alright, on this sun shell, to make sure that you're all the way down, look down inside the hole, and you'll see the thrust bearing. You'll see this come up against that thrust bearing. That's how you know you're down all the way. And it'll come past your forward clutch down into your direct clutch splines like this, this sun shell will. Then you know you're down all the way. Take these hold down bolts out here. This will take your return spring off. Your clutch return spring. Piston return spring, I should say. Piston out, overdrive piston, and you got some little Teflon sealing rings, and I've got some new sealing rings here somewhere. What I do with them? Here they are. That'd be those right there. These are white, but the ones I've got are orange, which are really doesn't matter. I kind of like these scarf cut rings, uh, some of the GMs and Dodges with that resizing tool and all that bullshit. I hate those things. Oh, I can't get this thing off with one hand. Well, well, there we go. Okay. So I put a paint mark on here, that way I get everything lined back up. And then you can zip your bolts out. You can drop it like that. All right, there goes the bump. And gotta move the book before it gets full of transmission fluid. separator plate on the separator plate you'll have this oblong hole it'll line up with the oblong part in the pump housing and then your bolt holes in the center wall line up 
and then just you know just look at your pump gears make sure they're not real rough the dots on these gears are going to be facing up Alright guys, so we got our pump disassembled. I've already checked my pump gears. You want to make sure when you pull these pump gears that it's not really scratched up on, you know, these are, these polish marks here are nothing abnormal here. But if they've got deep scratches on either side of these gears, and then look at the teeth in between and see if any foreign materials pass through here and beat these gears up here. Because that'll, that'll screw you up. So, put your dots the dots face up I'm trying to get it back in here I'm having a hell of a time but uh take just a little bit of clean transmission fluid get those gears wet okay so now separator plate Okay, so where's my little oblong, weird-looking hole at here? Right there. Okay, so now we got to put our pump assembly back on there and get it all lined back up. We'll line our paint marks up. And I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. So slide the bottom pump part of your pump up to your top part here. You know, get your bolt holes lined up. And then, uh, I know it's probably pretty rinky-dinky, but I have the actual special tool for the 4L60Es, which I've done a lot of. But I don't do these many 5R110s, because really, they don't really go bad that often. So I haven't bought all the specialty tools for it. It's just not worth it. Uh, there's things you can do to improvise. Uh, tie a bunch of hose clamps together and where the pump halves meet and the spacer plate meet make sure you get it centered up on that and then just tighten them up evenly around that and that'll pull everything together in alignment and then you can torque these bolts down to 21 foot-pounds and replace your pump o-ring right here. Uh, there's two ceiling rings here We'll put our overdrive piston back in it right here and our return spring there and the snap ring, or not a snap ring, I forgot it's bolted in. And there's another one on the back side on the actual end of the, of the uh, stator right there, another seal ring. And I've already replaced my pump seal, my front pump seal and then change your front pump seal. It's pretty easy to change it out when you've got it off, you know, when you got it the pump in two. And talk that seal out and put a new one in. I can't stress you enough not to change that seal. It really sucks when you don't change that seal and you put one together and it leaks. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this pump together and we'll go on to the next the next hey guys, so here we go. We got low reverse piston. All right, you gotta take a tool. It'll go in the case lugs there. It's like this, got a T-handle in the center, and this center part will screw down and compress that spring. And then you pop your snap ring off right here. You can see that, try to get this down here where you can see that. Okay, and then to take it out, I got a, another thing. This is number 17 thrust washer. You wanna put the flat side down, like that. I've already changed this piston out, but uh, once you get that snap ring off, take a look. You have to get an air nozzle with kind of a longer tip and get into this hole right here and put some air into that hole and it'll pop that piston out of there. And then basically it's just reversal disassemble. You know, get your new piston, lube it up, kind of press it in place by hand, and it'll pop right in there, it should. And then put your return spring and compress it and put your snap ring on and put your number 17 thrust washer on. Um, I stuck my output shaft back in there and put the nut on, the seal in there. 
Um, got all that in there. Back up, uh, the shaft goes back up through your uh, reverse, little reverse clutch and all that, or little reverse clutch piston. So now what you want to do is take your output ring gear and carrier. Make sure that you get this stuff washer in here. Then slide it in over the output shaft. Try not to drop it on there. You can. That wasn't too bad. Sometimes it's hard to get those in there without dropping them. But and then you've got a these got thrust washers on each side of the planetary carrier. Okay, so that's in there. Now I gotta look at this one more time. Okay. Okay, there we go. So, all right, guys. So we got our low reverse one-way clutch. You want to make sure that this spins clockwise and locks up counterclockwise. Obviously it says this side up because it's going to have a flat surface for the last friction to go against in the case. Oh, I'm going to need probably two hands to do this. We'll see. Yeah, any snap ring. You see the end of the snap ring right here if you can see that. Take your snap ring, go down after you get your low reverse one way clutch in. Uh, put it in and they want the end gaps approximately at 1 o'clock. So if you're looking at the bottom of the case of the transmission, that would be 6 o'clock. So you want it, and this would be 12 o'clock. So right around 1 o'clock is where they want So here's another thing that will probably get laughed about, but that's okay. Uh, it works, and uh, I'm sure if I did, if I if I got, you know, like four or five of these and in one year, I'd probably go buy all the special tools for them if I knew I was going to do more of them and more of them. But I'm just not going to do that because uh, then I don't make any money rebuilding them if I buy all those tools and do one of them for one season. You know, it's just, it doesn't pay. So you got to improvise a little bit. So you're supposed to have this carrier. If you ever did uh, 4100, 4100 has got kind of the same setup. It comes into these lugs here, it's got a little T handle, and you lower the whole clutch assembly down in there. Well, I have that for a 4100 because I do a lot of those 4100s, but it doesn't fit this one. So I got wire hooked around it here, and what I do is I pick it up and I lower it down in there and I get it splined up. And then I rotate the drum assembly until it comes into these openings here, and I unhook my wire, and then I pull it out the top. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, get that in there. Okay. Alright guys, we're there. We are down. And now we'll just unhook our wire. 
rotate it around to the openings here. In the case where the valve body goes. I had a pair of needle nose pliers somewhere. I damned if I can find them now. I've spent too many times out in the field or out in the woods or somewhere and not had all these I mean it's nice I'm not gonna say nothing about it it's nice having the tool but one thing is when you can't afford it or you just don't have it you need to get the thing going you got to be able to figure something out you know so it come out a little easier. Alright, so those your Ford gear train assembly is in there. All with a piece of baling wire. Okay guys, so you got your uh, Ford gear train assembly we put in there. Now you put your intermediate pressure plate in, in the case. And then put the flat side up. There'll be a beveled side and a flat side. Flat side goes up because you're going to have a friction. And there's three uh, frictions and three steels that go in here. Start out with a friction. is in there. Next thing we'll be doing is the center support. Alright guys, so on this center support, when you stick that center support in there, you don't want to force that in there. It's aluminum. It'll break. So, you just kind of eyeball it. And you've got your feed holes down here. Just try to get it kind of somewhat centered there. And it doesn't really even matter if you do that. Once you get it down where it needs to be, you can turn it to line those up. But it'll kind of bind up. This one bound up about halfway down and I just had to twist it and I twisted it back and forth and then it just popped right in and then uh, then what you want to do is loosely install your feed bolts you want to make sure now these have different size orifices in them the hex headed one on top goes to the forward part of the case that's your intermediate clutch orifice feed bolt this is your forward clutch feed bolt the one with the torx head on it make sure those are in the right spot or you'll have problems so loosely install those and then the snap ring that goes in there that holds the center support in is a tapered snap ring. It's tapered. You want to look at that snap ring, it'll kind of have a, a concave up on it. You want the flat side down and put the flat side in the case. And you want the end gaps on the snap rings at 6 o'clock, right in there. And then torque your, let me look in the book, I think it's 32 foot pounds. Oh, let's see here. Tighten the feed bolts. Nope. 32 newton meters is 24 foot pounds. So torque goes down to 24 foot pounds. And I'm going to be honest with you, on the feed bolts, I usually go about 5 pounds over because I've had feed bolts come loose on me. So uh, torque them to 30 foot pounds. This is number 5 thrust bearing. You'll see that it has a little, kind of a little lip here. That's going to go down against the center support. Just like that. 
and the flat side will be up. And then this will go on next. And then we have another. This this bearing here, I, I usually take a lot of grease and put it together on the planetary here. So take you some trans gel and smear it on here. And then take that, you'll see it's pretty obvious, see the lip here in the concave. Take that and go down there like that. So we got our uh, coast clutch assembly and our overdrive carrier installed. So now what do we do next here? Uh, we're going to be doing overdrive now. Install the overdrive clutch assembly snap ring with the gap in the 6 o'clock position. So there's only one snap ring left, so it's pretty obvious to where it goes. I'm going to need two hands, so what you want to do is the same thing, is put this snap ring in, this one's a flat snap ring, there's nothing special about it, and put it in at 6 o'clock, end gaps at the 6 o'clock. Now your overdrive pressure plate's going to go in against that snap ring you just put in the case, and you see these little notches right here in the pressure plate, those face towards you. And just throw it in there, it'll go into the case notches here, and then uh, you want to start out with a friction. That'll go over that carrier, see? And a steel. All right. So then we're going to get a new pump gasket, stick it on here. We have a new pump gasket in the kit right here. Pretty self-explanatory. Line up the holes. All right, where's that slot? Right here. I might have it 180 degrees out. I do. Flip it over. Never fails. It's always wrong the first time you put it on. Okay, so there's our case gasket. Okay, so where's my input shaft? I'm trying to remember which end goes where. I think the long end goes in. in or the short end goes in. I think it's long and I'm pretty sure. The book doesn't say. Okay, well that's pretty. So obviously there's a different spine count. Okay, so you can't really screw that up. Alright, so where are we at next? Now, how many pins are... Alignment pins are used in the case holes. We're not going to do that because we don't have them. Install the special tools in the case in order to install the pump. I don't really know why you need all the pins. We're not going to do any of that. We're going to eyeball the holes and line it up and bolt it in there. Like I've done a million times before. So now we're going to put the pump in. Alright guys, so I got my pump seated in there. And I just snugged it down to where it bottomed out against the gasket. But this is, you don't have to do this, but I do it because 
I've screwed them up before and cut the ceiling rings putting them in and ever since then I always get them in there and then I pull them back out to make sure my ceiling rings seated up and came together and then you know and then I'll go back together with it. I just don't want to do it I just don't want to have to pull it back out of the pickup again so that's up to you whether you want to do that or not. Turn, we left off at the uh, well, installing the front pump assembly uh, we've got it in there we've got uh, the bolts torqued down the front pump bolts are torqued 20 foot pounds uh, word of caution when you're putting those front pumps in you want to uh, work your way from side to side with a couple bolts straight across from each other and just go about a half a turn on each one till you get it seated up don't go too much on one side and get that pump in a bind in the housing because it's an aluminum pump I mean it'll it'll break something or it'll cock it sideways enough to where your ceiling ring will get caught and hung up on the edge and tear it off or so you just kind of be be careful that front pump can similarly I've I'm not gonna lie to you folks I've had them hang at my butt before I'll tell you that right now I've had some that I've put in uh, 4R70W last year I had to pull it back out because the ceiling ring cut on me so just just be careful with them I mean they're, they're they can be kind of uh, kind of finicky so after you get done with that and get your front pump bolted in you're pretty much done with the gear train on the transmission everything's done there uh, on this one here it was shifting fine before it broke I called the customer and explain well I explained to his dad you know I've known these this was a customer I you know was relatively a new customer I would probably not do this but I would probably um, go completely through the valve body and everything on it I've known these guys for 20 years and then work for them off and on um, I just explained to him that look you know we can pull the valve body back off it's something we can pull off uh, in the vehicle and if if it's not shifting right we can pull it off so that's that's another alternative that you can tell your customer that you know if it's you know it just depends on how much money these guys want to spend I mean when you get into these valve bodies and you start putting shift kits in them and stuff it's time consuming so it takes time um, hell it's time consuming going through the gear train but you know it's just it's just whatever they want to do you got to make sure that you cover your end though too and tell them that you know look man when I if I'm not going to go through the valve body you know 500 miles down the road you get a shift valve that stucks that's on you partner because you didn't want to do it now so you have to really make make it clear what they want and, and the ramifications of what they want so I've known these guys forever and I know right now that they'd pay me again to take it back off so I'm not worried about them a bit so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our chances and bolt it back on there uh, one thing I can tell you with these 5R110 valve bodies okay they've got a aluminum manual valve in them and this one scratched up fairly good but I've seen some way worse than this so you really want to watch those uh, manually if they're really really bad to where you can feel those see I can't feel them with my fingernails I can see them but I can't really feel them with my fingernails so um, I had one one time that wouldn't even move I mean it was it just wouldn't even move at all because of that manual valve so you put your uh, valve body back on well let's see if I can do this see if I'm talented enough to do this with the camera Probably not. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm going to end up screwing my valve body gasket up, so I better just put it on. And then, uh, you want to line the notch up on your manual valve with your with your linkage on your your shift lever All right, guys. So we got it on there. I'll show you what that. Looks like. 
Okay. So, there's your manual valve lined up with the slot with your the little tit on your shift linkage. And then you'll torque all these down. I'm going to show you the picture, and that way you guys got the you know on, on video the the uh, the torque sequence. These are torqued to 89 inch pounds in sequence. And here's our case connector. Make sure you turn this back uh, counterclockwise to get this line. See the little keeper right here? This will pop. This little tit will pop over that and lock into that spot there. So make sure you do that or you'll have a leak on yourself. Um, here is a picture of the sequence. I'll hold that on there for a while so you guys can do a screenshot of that or something and print it or whatever you guys want to do. 89 inch pounds. Okay, so when you get done with that, you're ready to rock and roll. Put your pan on. Uh, let me see what the pan bolts work. I think they're, I think they're 20 foot pounds. I can't remember. Let's see here. I still got to put my speed sensors in. Those are torqued to 80 inch pounds. Pan bolts are only torqued to 11 foot pounds. I don't know if you want to go side to side. That's usually what I do. I'll start up and go side to side in the middle and work my way out. And so those are torqued to 11 foot pounds. So, hey guys, appreciate you watching this. Hopefully, help somebody out along the line here uh, with the 5R110. Maybe save yourself some money. Do it yourself. Um, they're not that bad to do, really. Um, so tomorrow I'll be back, and uh, once I get it in the vehicle, we'll test drive it and we'll see what it does. Thanks for watching.